1978. The shroud was on exhibit for six weeks. Three and a half million people came to see it. They would, they would pass through the cathedral. They would, they would view the cloth above the altar behind bulletproof glass. And it was at the end of the 1978 exhibition of the shroud that 40 American scientists had access to it for five days continuously, 122 hours of hands-on research with this, with, this, with this cloth. When they arrived in Turin, in Turin, they had over 72 crates of scientific equipment weighing over 10 tons brought from various laboratories throughout the United States. Now this is a planning session on the first day of their, of their, of their meeting and they've even brought a uh, stainless steel uh, table here that was used to, uh, to hold the shroud so they could do a variety of tests. All these are single, are individual uh, stainless steel panels that can be removed so then they could uh, do all kinds of stuff on both sides of the cloth. And uh, here's a planning session that they're going to determine who's going to do what and when. Now, the team scientists represented a variety of, of, of highly prestigious uh, institutions, both, both, both private and government. And uh, I'm not going to list all these, but you can see them there. And then when they, with the, with the, the, the shroud was on exhibit for six weeks in the cathedral. Now, the cathedral is attached to the old palace. To Turin, Italy used to be the, uh, used to be the capital of Italy. And so, and, and so now they're taking the shroud down from where it was on exhibit for six weeks and they're going to bring it back into some back rooms in the palace that had been set up as examination rooms. And now they're taking the cloth, they're going to attach it to this, to this stainless steel table, and it'll be attached by magnets. And, it, and so, and the, and the whole thing is, is mapped out. We have uh, numbers down here and letters going this way so that they can, so that they can set up the shroud in, a, in like a quadrant so that they, they know every, what they're doing at every section of the shroud. Now, there were dozens of tests performed from infrared th thermography to ultraviolet x-ray. Uh, this, is, this is spectroscopy. Every square inch of the shroud was photographed at different levels of magnification. There's are some of the tests, and I will mention these to you. Photomicroscopy, optical, optical and infrared re reflectance spectroscopy, scanning photography from infrared to ultraviolet, infrared thermograph imaging, low, low energy x-ray radiography, x-ray fluorescent spectrometry, particle analysis, blood analysis, microchemical analysis, over 10,000 samples, you know, little, little sticky tapes, particle analysis. They did a lot of work in 122 hours. When the, when the scientists got permission to do their work, they were told only one thing. You, all, your tust, all, all your tests have to be non-destructive tests. You can't be taking scissors and cutting off hunks of this thing. And so, and it's very important also to know this. Most of the scientists, when they went to Turin in 1978, believed that this thing was some kind of fake or forgery, some kind of an artwork. Very few of the scientists, in fact, only two believed, and they were both Catholic, and only two believed that this thing could be authentic. Tom Dumahala, nuclear physicist, leader of the group, says this. We all thought we would find it was a forgery and would be packing our bags in a half an hour. John Heller, blood chemist, he, he goes on to write this book, Report on the Shroud of Turin. He says, I was convinced it was a forgery, but now there is no question in my mind that there was a scourged, crucified man in the shroud. Barry Schwartz, a documenting photographer with the Brooks Institute, says, we can't figure out how this image came to be, but the person that we see here fits only one person known to history. These are dramatic statements coming from a, gr from, coming from a, a group of scientists that went over there believing that this thing was some kind of fake or forgery or artwork of some kind. Now, the official statement, project release statement, it reads like this. And they're all scientists agreeing with this. There are no chemical or physical methods known which can account for the totality of the image. Nor can any combination of physical, chemical, biological, or medical circumstances explain the image adequately. It goes on. We can conclude for now that the shroud image is that of a real human form of a scourged, crucified man. It is not the product of an artist. The blood stains are composed of, hemo of, of hemoglobin and give a positive test for serum albumin.